Fox 56 Sports. Welcome into the OT, everybody. I'm Nicole Hutchison, your host tonight. We've got a lot of things to get to. They were making shots. I mean, that's something that we should have seen against Tennessee in the SEC semifinals. And we all remember they shot a season low first half, 22 points. The story of this first half has just been not been able to finish drives. How important is it to stress execution going into the half? Yeah, we're missing these opportunities. People say I'm bored a lot crazy, sort of, kind of. Guys, I have to go ahead and finish that lyric. Coach Calipari in midseason mode in June, dropping Lil Wayne bars. The temperature dropping was perfectly fitting for this game tonight. I mean, the Kentucky Wildcats played ice cold. In college tennis, you have the subtle fist pump celebration after a big point. That was me back in my prime at Howard University. But then there's Kentucky top singles player Liam Draxel, who just brings a different level of intensity. This Kentucky defense played Georgia better than anybody this season. They held them to just three field goals in the first half. You have established yourself as one of the best, if not the best, women's college basketball player in the country. How does that kind of feel, just having that attached to your name? It was a stunner out in Greensboro. A battle between two Wildcats, but Kentucky once again sent home packing early. I hate to break it to you, Oscar Sheboy was not here to throw the first pitch, but hey, the fans are still piling in the Wild Health field. Low scores win here at Keene Trace, which means players have got to be aggressive to get a birdie or better. And unfortunately, fan favorite Lexington product Josh Teeter really struggled. They put up 41 points, like you said, including a 51-yard punt return. And I mean, my goodness, this defense held Scott County to just zero first downs the first half. She had a couple of games on the Let's slate go. tonight. What you got for us? Man, listen, they had me out there ready to cross over some girls out there, but listen, I'm not going I'm not gonna do it too. A lot of people didn't believe Amar Clark would be sitting here. And that includes himself. All I remember is like kind of fainting as they put me on the ambulance truck. When I got there, I was just full of meds. Just three days into Clark's sophomore year, he saw his season end without it even starting. Amar broke his leg in a scrimmage on August 16th, 2019. I didn't think it was nothing major until I seen how swollen it was. He spent that year on the sidelines, seeing his teammates enjoy what he couldn't, hoping to make his debut his junior year until August 16th struck again. I'm a young black man doing all that I can. On the same day, exactly a year later, Clark's cousin was shot and killed. He was at a hotel, and then he got hit in a crossfire that wasn't meant for him. I was with him like every day, and I like I feel like I would have been with him that night, but I, I tested positive for COVID, and I kind of lost all hope for football. I just didn't have love for the game no more. As you could imagine, my people don't want no trouble. We got enough strong goals until one person pulled him out of the darkest moment of his life. Straight up asked him, he's like, man, when are you gonna come out here and play football back with us? Because you're a person I, we need to have around. He gave me a smirk, they'd always give somebody that, um, that great smile that he gives. And he told me he's gonna think about it and he'd think he would end up doing it. And the rest was the history. Making the decision to play ball again was tough. Clark never had time to process his emotions, but playing football gave him a way to cope. He was key in the Broncos having one of the best defenses last year that made a state title run. That resulted in a full ride to Union College. The biggest thing that I enjoy as a coach is seeing confidence grow in the young athletes. And it was really a pleasure to see him come back from that injury, grow in the confidence on and off the field, just to deal with all the adversity that he's dealt with uh, to get to where he needs to get now is, is really, really special. Amar's walking in his purpose. I miss him and this hard work is for you and the family. A walk that's still not finished. You actually did come to play. I got it. Okay. Uh -huh. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. They had to take you out of your comfort zone and, you know, put you on the spot today. But, I mean, what are some ways that you decompress from football? My niece and my nephew, I love hanging out with them, and that's what calms me down the most if I'm having a bad day or stressful day, bad day of practice, because, I mean, like, it happens to the best of us. You led Frederick Douglass in scoring last year and in tackles this year, obviously doing the same thing. 
Thanks, man. What has helped you stay so dominant and just perform so effortlessly on the field? It's, it's the off-season work. Um, just continue to work every single day. Just continue to be in the weight room and, you know, on the field doing agility drills. And then also my teammates play a big role in that too, just blocking for me and clearing up holes so I can score. In the earlier the part of the season, not a lot of people threw to you. Knowing that, you know, so many people are so intimidated by you and they know, hey, I'm not throwing the ball Ty Bryant's way. What kind of confidence does that give to you? It gives me a lot, but I can see I got to continue to work uh, every single day and build on my craft because next year it's not going to be like that at all. There's a lot of talent in Kentucky as far yeah, as wide receivers. Of course, you're one of them. Um, but as far as you being a DB as well, who's been one of the best receivers that you've gone one-on-one -on -one against? Oh, dang. Dang key for sure. <laughs> dang for sure, man. I remember 2020, 2020 season, uh, one-on-ones, everyone used to go, we used to go, and then at the end of the one-on-ones, the last one-on-one would always be me versus him, and it used to be like, it would be back and forth, back and forth battles. Who's played a big role in your life when it comes to you playing this sport? Uh, my dad. My dad and my brother, for sure, because like my brother, my brother made it fun. At a young age, he definitely made it fun. I remember we used to just be playing football yeah. in the living room. He used to be on his knees, and every time he would fumble, he'd be like, get on the ground, you know, and I used to just jump on the ground for the football. But my dad, he definitely installed the game of football into my head, had me back him when I was three. I got to ask one, one last question. What's up? If you had to rate yourself in Madden, what would your rating be? Yeah, my prize going to say 99, <laughs> but... I knew you were uh, going to say that. <laughs> I say realistically about a good 86, you know, a few things I need to get better at to get to that 99.